The Ludlow Massacre by Jocelyn Flores, playing the part of John D. Rockefeller Jr. The Ludlow Massacre was the fighting between the United Mine Workers of America, as pictured above, and my father's company, the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company, also known as CFI. Before the fighting began, I had plans of my own to do better things with my father's company. I wanted to make it the best for him to own and for my family to represent proudly. All of my plans went down the drain, however, when the miners began to go on strike. On September 17, 1913, the mine workers were notified of the strike against the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company. The main demands that needed to be met for the mine workers to come off of strike was for the United Mine Workers of America to be the central agent for mine workers throughout Colorado and through northern New Mexico. The company also wanted union recognition. After my family and I found out about the mine workers' demands, we were infuriated. Not to brag or anything, but by mine ownership, we effectively ruled the entire region, and we were not going to let anything like silly mine workers get past us. Assisted by UMWA groups across the U.S., the strikers organized tent cities close to the mouths of canyons which led to coal camps and continued their strike. Although the miners thought the company and I were absolutely clueless, we were the exact opposite. We knew where they were and what they were doing all at the same time. We had eyes everywhere. We also took special safety precautions such as using the Death Special, which is an armored car with a mounted machine gun pictured above. Ludlow, Colorado was the largest of the colonies, and on the morning of April 20th, 1914, troops fired into the camp with machine guns, and anyone who seen moving in the camp was targeted. The miners fired back, and fighting raged for almost 14 hours. 66 people were killed in the violence. Aside from all the problems during the strike, the miners persevered. Union members were being beaten and kidnapped. Shots were fired into the camps from strike breakers, and National Guardsmen were a constant occurrence, and harsh winter was taking its toll. But they would not give up, and they would keep fighting for their liberty. After Louis Ticas, the main organizer of the camps, was killed by a National Guard lieutenant, news of the massacre started to spread around very quickly. Miners around the country went on strike to make agreement with the remaining Colorado miners. Several cities in the state were taken over and occupied by miners, and some National Guard units even laid down their arms and refused to fight anymore. Even after all that garbage they put me and my company through, the miners never got what they wanted. They failed to obtain union recognition and their jobs went down the drain. After the massacre, the decision was made to replace most of the miners with non-union workers. The people who passed away during the fight did get some recognition. Fifty miles north of present-day Trinidad in 1918, a monument was built to remember those who died during the strike and still stands tall today. Thank you.